This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay. At the end of the video, I'll show you just how easy it was to use PCBWay's rapid prototyping service to order parts for this project. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam, and I'm just putting these stack screws in here into this uh, quadcopter frame because that is how the flight controller and the other electronics are going to be securely mounted to the stack frame here. Now, the thing about this is it is a 30 by 30 hole spacing, which actually that's it's 30.5 by 30.5, just so you know. That's uh, the most common size. That's, that's what we would call a full size uh, flight controller. But sometimes there are other sizes. You have smaller sizes like uh, uh, 20 by 20 is the, probably the next most common. Um, I don't think anything is really 16 by 16 anymore, but that, that is out there for some smaller components like video transmitters and stuff like that. What you also have is 25 by 25, and I, I believe all of those are actually 0.5 added to the end, but we just say you know the whole number because it's easier to say. Here you'll notice that this frame right here uh, does not have any other size of uh, mount. So what do you do? Well, you sponsor this video by PCB Way, and you have them 3D print uh, some designs. I've got some things here to show you, some fun things, and this may solve your problem if you are uh, building a quadcopter and uh, you need to mount some different size flight controllers. Now, uh, long story short, you can download these STL model files uh, for these adapters to go from one size flight controller to the other. Um, you can get these on rcwithadam.com, link in the description down below, and you can 3D print your own. But uh, what I did is uh, I had uh, PCB Way print these for me using their rapid prototyping service. I thought I'd show you, just kind of demonstrate here. We have the red and the blue. These are uh, printed UTR 8100, and then they are dyed. And then these guys over here, 3D printed in aluminum, actually, so you can hear that. These guys are actually metal, so it's, you know, they're heavier. This is just kind of a novelty. I just wanted to show you guys kind of, you know, some of the things that are possible with 3D printing. So I have three different designs here. Now, why would I have three different designs? Well, that's because there are some different situations that we would need a different design for. So, uh, for example, these first two, the red and the blue, these were designed to be printed with the little pegs, the little pegs that go in the little grommets to hold the flight controller. So for example, here is a all-in-one flight controller board and these pegs that are 3D printed will just slide right here in the grommet and you can just press that in and really that would probably secure it just fine. Um, but it is possible that it could come loose in a crash. So to kind of semi-permanently secure it, um, I would probably just melt the, like heat up the end of the 3D printed part and then just kind of squish it down. So that way it kind of captured uh, the grommet. But really like they're not, these are not coming off very easily at all. You can see that uh, we're able to fit a 20 by 20 flight controller stack, right? Or uh, excuse me, 25 by 25 flight controller stack. And then we have all these additional holes to actually mount to the frame or possibly to mount to another stack itself. Um, and then the other situation that you might come across is um, maybe the flight controller, like this one, you'll notice that it has a little arrow right there. And the little arrow means that uh, this flight controller was designed to be installed uh, with the arrow pointing forwards, like towards the front of the quad. Uh, you can change things around if you need to in the you know firm, firm, uh, firmware programming stuff. But uh, sometimes the you know, maybe the frame is designed for this or the stack is designed for this. And so you really, you want to fit it in like that, kind of like diagonally. Well, in that case, you would want to use this other adapter right here. This adapter is designed to fit the 30 by 30 spacing right here, something like that. Let's just imagine that I ran it down on the screws right there. And then you can actually mount the 25 by 25 diagonally on here. Okay, so you see that? So that's what this one is for if you need a diagonal setup and you need to go from uh, 30 by 30 hole spacing or 20 by uh, 20 by 20 to 25 by 25 diagonally. Let's say if you didn't want to have the little pegs printed on here, well, you could either just try to print them and then just cut them off. Um, 
and then you know drill holes or you could just change them in a you know modeling program um, but if you want it just flat and kind of as an adapter kind of a bridge to go from like a uh, make, let's say you have a 30 by 30 ESC stack and then you want to put a 20 by 20 flight controller on there this uh, would work well for that. This one is just completely flat, so it's very easy to print. For example, let's say that we wanted to take this 30 by 30 ESC all-in-one board. Let's just imagine that this is in place properly. But then let's say we wanted to use a 20 by 20 flight controller. Well, there's nowhere to put it, you know, on here. And that is where this adapter would come in. What you'd want to do is get some little M2 screws, and that's usually the size for the 20 by 20 stack this has all the the holes for for everything so you could do uh, diagonal um, uh, 25 by 25 if you wanted to um, or you could do uh, inline all you have to do is put in the m2 screw wherever you want it to so that's going to be the second to last uh, second to last hole in line right here so you can see they're a little bit countersunk and that's to help get the thread started all right so so this is our 30 by 30, 25 by 25, 20 by 20, and then 16 by 16. I know 16 by 16 is not very common, but I figured, what the heck, let's just put it in there. So well, let's thread this through here. I'm just gonna use two screws for this example, but uh, you'd put the screws in through there. Okay, your stack is attached, and then you just attach it uh, right on top of your 30 by 30 board. Now, um, you might want or you would want to put some spacers and you're going to want some pretty tall stack screws so again this is uh this is just i'm just slapping this on here but just imagine that this is you know put on here correctly hey if i left out anything about these three different designs let me know or leave a comment down below they're available on rcwithadam.com if you want to 3d print them right now um, if you don't have a 3d printer or you want somebody else to 3d print it it is an option to go to pcbway.com and have them print it for you and right now i'm going to show you kind of the process for doing that uh, to make it not intimidating and see if that's something that you want to check out thanks for watching everybody keep flying stay safe out there do cool stuff and uh Watch the rest of this video, or at least leave it playing for me, and I will see you again very soon. We are on PCBWay.com. If we want to do some rapid prototyping with 3D printing, we're going to go down here to the 3D printing option from the top menu bar thing. And then right here, they got a drag and drop area where we can just drag and drop our models. Today, we're going to be printing some uh, board adapters for flight controllers. So we have three different ones we want to do. So we're going to put that in there. It's going to load bam there's a little uh 3d view of it and it, well, it's not loading for some reason on my browser that might be a pop-up blocker i'm not sure but uh we need to make sure we enter the quantity at least two let's say at least two for now maybe i'll do more i don't know uh the design units are in millimeters and then we get to pick what we want um now we do have a lot of different options and it's cool because they do sort of say what the uh material is and kind of a description for it so that's pretty cool um i think it would be cool to get i i like resin and i i do want to do resin because i think that's going to be um some of the, the the best because these adapters are so small so, so i think resin could be good nylon could be good as well let's let's do resin though let's do resin um you know, uh, titanium would be cool just because it's titanium. But and then we have different options for resin here. So, um, you know, you have to kind of look at the description to see what you want. So this one says plastic, high toughness, high heat resistance. We really want. Well, I, I love these transparent ones. Um, and honestly, I mean, let's see, colorless, transparent material with uh, blah, 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 suitable for general use models. Yeah, that's probably fine. Probably. I just I love that it's transparent um and it's so cool because you can uh dye it uh different colors so like we could dye it like a blue color i think blue looks pretty good let's just let's do this one in blue and let's see what else oh that one's translucent transparent translucent what's what's that oh okay okay i see so yeah kind of it's kind of similar general use let's stick with the transparent i like that so transparent we're going to dye it this blue color i think that looks cool and then we don't have any technical drawings we need to upload um 
we don't have any other kinds of uh, threads that need to be tapped or inserts or anything else going on really it's a very simple part um, and the printing risk I'm not sure if that's actually required customer knows about the thin walls designed to do not meet the wall thickness standard but needs to print as is takes all risks um, is that and then they give you an example of that so I'm not sure if that's required let's just leave that alone uh, for now um, and then that's basically it so we're done with that part and then you'll see at the bottom there's another drop down or drop in a uh, little thing there so we can just take our part here and boop there we go that's it so then we can scroll back up here you see that they give you like an estimate of the cost here and then what you do is you say submit request you can sign up or if you have a login you can go ahead and log in it'll take you to this page and this you'll notice right here is where it says being reviewed on, under the status so they're gonna have uh, an engineer take a look at that or maybe it's an artificial intelligence engineer I'm not really sure but they're gonna get back to you and say whether or not this uh, they like approve it whether they're able to do it or not and then um, they will give you a more accurate uh, price that's the basic process so at this point you just wait for them to get back to you and they usually get back to you like I think really quickly uh, I want to say like within a couple hours but you know it probably varies so if you are looking for some uh, rapid prototyping services or you know PCB services check out pcbway.com thanks again to them for sponsoring this video and this project right here and uh, this is cool because I'm gonna be giving these away to some lucky person Thanks for watching, everybody. Get out there, print something, fly something, and I will see you again very soon.